Number 62, letter A. Calculate the self-inductance of a 50 centimeter long, 10 centimeter diameter solenoid having 1,000 loops. Okay? So, letter A. All right. So, um, we have a solenoid formula over on the right-hand side. It says that the uh, self-inductance uh, occurring through a solenoid will be equal to the permeability of free space multiplied by the number of turns squared multiplied by the cross-sectional area of the solenoid, divided then by the length of the solenoid, okay? Anytime you have a changing current, basically, you'll have, um, you know, a changing, in the case of a loop, you'll have a changing uh, inductance. And also here inside of the uh, solenoid itself, even without anything changing, there also is uh, a inductance, all right? Interestingly enough. So this is going to be 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7th, times the number of turns, which is 1,000 squared, times the area. Now, they told us the diameter of the solenoid, but you know area by now is pi r squared, so we need to take pi, multiply it by half of the diameter, because that's what the radius is, 5, but then you know we need that in meters, so take that and multiply it by 10 to the minus 2. All right? And the length, they told us, is 50 centimeters, so you know we need that in meters, so that's going to be 50 times 10 to the minus 2. And I mean, theoretically, you can just cancel because these are both actually, whoop, no, 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 you cannot. I almost missed the square, pi r squared, okay? So now just plug it in. You can cancel one of them, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to wind up plugging it all in. So this is going to be 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7th multiplied by 1,000 squared multiplied then by pi times 5 times 10 to the minus 2 squared, all then divided by 50 times 10 to the minus 2. And we get a value here of about, the self-inductance here is about 1.97, 1 1.97 times 10 to the minus 2, and that's in terms of Henry, all right, or Henry's, those are the units. Guys, thanks for, oh, no, no, not thanks for tuning in. B. Letter B, man. All right. I thought I could get away easy on that one. All right. So letter B. Uh, how much energy is stored in this inductor when 20 amps of current flows through it? So we have a formula for the energy of the inductor. Fairly straightforward. It's going to be one half times the inductance multiplied by the current flowing through it squared. So this is just simply going to be one half times the inductance we just found is going to be 1.97 times 10 to the minus 2. Multiply it then by the current, square it, and again, take out the calculator and just plug it all in. So this is going to be 0.5 times then our answer from before, times then 20 squared. And I get a value of about 3.95. 3.95. So this is 3.95. 3.95, and that's in terms of uh, joules, all right? Letter C, how fast can it be turned off if the induced EMF cannot exceed three volts? All right, so we need this formula that the self-induced EMF will equal the negative. You know what we're gonna do with that. We've seen this in plenty of problems now. We're just gonna write the inductance. We're gonna get rid of the negative sign. The inductance multiplied by the change in current divided them by the change in time. If I have to solve this thing for time, we're just gonna simply cross multiply, right? We can switch the EMF and the time. So now, it has to be turned off, right? And uh, if it's going to be turned off and there was a 20 amp current flowing through it, then obviously the change in the current is going to be 20 amps. So the inductance that we found over here is what we're going to use for the inductance. 1.97 times 10 to the minus 2 times the change in current, that was 20, divided them by that maximal EMF is 3. And then we're going to find the time, all right? So let's just calculate that. So let's take that answer from before. And we're going to then multiply that by 20. And then we're going to divide it by 3. And this works out to be now about 0 0.132, I guess, seconds. And that's that. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Hopefully that helped. And I look forward to helping you with more problems. All right, check out more of the videos, taking chem or math. We got a whole bunch of solved questions out there for you in those topics. Even if you're not using the OpenStax books, they're free. Download them, find similar questions, because they're all basically the same thing, no matter what book you're using, and you will have all your questions solved. Guys, thank you very much.